Welcome to I Used to Know. I'm Scott. And I'm Steve. We are your hosts for this adventure into the past, where we dive into things we used to know when we were kids that are no, no longer true. true. Hey, Scott. Hey, Steve. So it's that time of year again, man. Uh, Time to get my end of the year taxes ready? Oh, come on. No, it's the holidays, oh, yeah. Scott. Uh, there's a spring in everybody's step, right? Don't you feel it? A song in everybody's thoughts. Joy to the world, peace on earth. You know, Christmas, yeah. man. It's Hanukkah, Kwanzaa, then Canadian Boxing, Boxing Day. Day. Yes. Yeah. yeah, I guess so. Why? You don't seem excited. What? You don't have this Christmas cheer in your heart? Come on. Christmas for me, honestly, is like the best time of the year. Right? Growing up, we'd, we'd have the whole family. I don't know if you remember. I come from a monstrously large family. Yes, you do. Right? So Christmas would mean going to this house filled with all these relatives and all these people and all this fun and singing and food and just joy. Come on. Not for you. Eh. I mean, <laughs> you know, so, all right, when I was growing up, Christmas was fun. Yeah. I, I want to say it was fun, yeah. right? It's I Christmas. Mean, in it fact, the truth is I would be the person who would get up at like 2.30 in the morning. Okay. Christmas that, morning. I was that, that kid. kid. Okay. I was that kid. You're like, hey, mom. Hey, mom. No. Hey, mom. No, we had rules. Ooh, okay. There were rules. No, no, hey, mom. No waking up the parents mm. until 7 a.m. We had the same rule. But I was allowed to open anything in my stocking. Yes. So I can go to my stocking. I can open up all my stuff in the stocking. Just to tide then, you over. And then just wait. <laughs> and just wait. You spend a lot of time just kind of like categorizing all the stuff in your stocking. Yes. Well, organizing all the candy. It wasn't that complicated because generally speaking, Santa gave me batteries in my stocking. <laughs> For what was to come. Yes. Under the tree. And so my whole time was pretty much trying to guess the things that I really wanted and yeah. what took a D size and it's what like, took a C size. A nine volt? Why do I have a nine volt? Exactly. I'm going through my list. Yes. And it makes no sense. And then as I got older, they stopped using all those sizes and then everything was like a double A. And I was like, what the heck? I can't tell what it is. <laughs> it was all. But I mean, it was fun. We would open presents. My whole family would be there. My grandmother usually would be there. My grandfather would come in from church on the Sunday morning or on the Christmas morning. I mean, it was a great time. Man, it, it, that all sounds great, man. What, so where is your holiday spirit? Yeah, it's wrapped up in Christmas presents, and I meant that pun. <laughs> wrapped up, I yeah, get it. Yeah. Okay. All right, so it's uh, it's given all these gifts. That That's what's getting you down? Well, you know, it's hard to find the perfect gift, and of course you need to find the right amount of gifts for people. So, you know, it's no. just it's kind of hard. You yeah, know? some people are hard to shop for. It's work. Yeah, I get it. <laughs> all right. Uh, but uh, do you know why we hand out gifts in the first place? Yeah, it's to remember the three wise men bringing the frankincense and the myrrh and gold to the baby Jesus, right? Uh, well, I mean, sort of. I mean, there's much more to that, especially these days. Are you saying that the whole art of giving gifts around Christmas isn't even related to the three wise men? Oh, no, 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 no. It, it is related, kind of. But what I'm saying is the extreme gift giving that we do these days is really traced back to the Knickerbockers. The Knickerbockers with the basketball team, New York <laughs> and the Knicks. New York Knicks. Yeah, yeah, no, no, no. Oh. The original Knickerbockers. Back in 1800s in New York City, there was this group of really wealthy men, and they called themselves the Knickerbockers. <laughs> that was the name that they chose. That was the name. I'm wealthy. <laughs> I'll be a Knickerbocker. Yep. The New York Knickerbockers, the okay. wealthy group. <laughs> Strange people. Okay. Yes, the original coastal elites. Oh. And they hated this time of year. Do you know why? Oh, it's, it's, it's New York. It's cold. It's winter in New York. They don't like it. Nope. Well, according to the Atlantic, right? And they, kind of, they didn't like it because poor people were constantly asking these rich people for food and drink. <laughs> the nerve. Yeah, because, <laughs> see, this time of year was traditionally, both in Europe and in the early times of, of the United States, a time for helping those less fortunate. Mm, yeah. Right? But they were not a fan of this. The Knickerbockers. No. No. So they started to, what they started to do was try to encourage specific celebrations, and they were trying to get people to do them inside, you know, not on the streets. Oh, because then it's not in the public. Yeah, keeping the food and festivities among friends and not among the riffraff. <sighs> The you street know. urchins. Yeah, so so they did this by enlisting one of their more well-known Knickerbockers by the name of Washington Irving. What? Oh, Washington Irving. So wait a minute. He's talking about 
Sleepy Hollow at Christmas time? This is a Halloween thing. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. This is mixing up the holidays. Yeah, no, not exactly. But Washington Irving really loved St. Nick oh. and the whole thing around St. Nick. So he started to embellish tiny stories and traditions. So traditions that were like little traditions, like give candy to someone or something like that. Mm -hmm. He would write these stories that were like making it seem like everybody was giving candy and mm -hmm. everyone was dancing and, and having these lavish parties for the holiday. And, and they were driving people towards these giant Christmas celebrations and do them inside so that they would celebrate with their own families. And in this particular case with the Knickerbockers, you know, to to associate with people of your similar economic status. Oh, I get it. Yeah. And then Charles Dickens would later fine tune a Christmas story to fit into this narrative. Okay, so this is going all the way back then. To yeah, Dickens yeah. Even. Yep. And then it was all brought home when there was a story called A Visit from St. Nicholas came out, which would be later known as The Night Before Christmas. Oh, and all through 1822. The house. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. And if you think about it, the story talks about visions of sugar plums dancing in their heads and presents, you know, for kids, you know, brought by St. Nick. Got it. So so this is all just being made up in the stories, and now people want to emulate that. Yeah, yeah. So these elitist holidays started to take shape. Um, but what ended up happening was this, at the same time, this new group of people started to show up, you know. So while you had this battle of the haves and the have-nots... The emergence of the American middle class started to come out. Oh, okay. So now, now I'm starting to get it. The middle class wants to be a little bit like the elite, right? And then they've got these parties. So the middle class started giving the presence that they were reading about. Exactly. Ah. So throw in some quick rise of commercialization of commodities and you know big businesses trying to get the masses to buy their stuff, and poof. Everybody gives presents at Christmas. <laughs> Oof, just like, just like just that. Just like that. That is so crazy. Yep. <laughs> Even Washington Irving, I think I remember I researched, he, he went to England and actually convinced them the same thing. Really? Yep. All right. So you got a couple rich people wanted to have their own private parties, not help out the poor. They're trying to stay away from them. And because of that, we all give presents to each other at Christmas time. Uh, yep. That would be it. <laughs> and in fact, you know, Americans, boy, do we like giving Christmas presents. Boy, do we. Yeah. Um, the, a study performed by the National Retail Federation said that this year, Americans are going to spend approximately $885 on gifts. Each American. Yes. Ooh. And so that adds up with holiday sales worldwide expecting to exceed $717 billion this year. Billion. That's billion with a B. Yes. And if oh. you think of it this way, NASA's budget here in the United States... Yeah. In 2018, was 19.89 billion dollars. <laughs> so it's like 20 billion dollars for all of NASA, all of NASA, right? Mars probes, gonna go going to going to going to Moon, Orion project, all that stuff. All that compared to buying Christmas presents, candy canes, <laughs> and buying Christmas presents, and all the wrap. Oh, wow, that's yeah. amazing. I know it's absolutely crazy. We could we could. Be on every planet in in the whole solar system with the money that's going into Christmas. Yeah, if you flip flop them, you know everybody would probably have a nice little present, and we could have a starship, you know, something out there. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, but come on, I mean, I still like giving presents, right? And sometimes the ones I want to give, they're so popular, it's it's hard to get, oh, uh, you know, get your hands on them. Oh yeah. Wow. Oh, why don't we talk about right now? The most popular Christmas presents um, that we used to know. Oh, yeah. There you go. Yeah. That we used to know. Show title. Yeah. All right. So that sounds great. All right. So I have a little list that I got from BuzzFeed. Oh, okay. Okay. What, uh, what is this list? All right. So it's Let's... going over the most popular presents over the decades, and it starts in 1910. 1910. Okay. So these are going to be, these are old, old presents. Wait, well, the first ones will be. All right. So here we go. Brace yourselves. The 1910 hot presents. <laughs> Everybody's at the store waiting to buy these. Yes. Was the rocking horse. <laughs> the, uh, the thing that used to sit in the corner of my house that nobody would touch. That was the hot yes. toy of yeah. 1910. My, my favorite is the second one. Yeah, which is? Fireworks. <laughs> <laughs> That's on the other side of the excitement spectrum to the, the 
rocking horse. Yeah, I read something about how that was very popular until lots of kids got hurt. <laughs> you would shocker. Yeah, how'd that happen? <laughs> yeah, who knew? And then finally, the third most popular gift in the 1910s were nuts, like mm-hmm. the kind you eat. Just nuts. Just just variety of nuts. And I think peanuts may count still back then as nuts. Oh. Even though they were actually the boobs. Oh, man. That would be a depressing kind of Christmas. <laughs> just opening up your, your packages. Some, Mr. Some Peanut planters. jumps out. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well. Well, I mean, honestly, growing up, we used to also celebrate St. Nicholas Day. Mm-hmm. Oh, the oranges in the shoe? Well, we, we did it. It was uh, fruits and nuts. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Makes sense. Mm-hmm. So, all right. So that's the 1910s. I'm going to go on with the 1920s. Okay, you're going to do the 20s. Yeah, yeah. So, right. so now it's a, it's it's the 20s. You got the flappers out there. Everybody's doing the Charleston. Was that the 20s? No, uh, maybe the 30s. No, yeah, I think the 20s. It could be 20s. Um. All right. So now you're under, uh, you're under the tree, and you pull out a radio flyer wagon. Now I had one of those growing up from the 1920s. Well, <laughs> I think mine was for the 1920s. Mine was a reboot of a reboot of a reboot of a mm-hmm. reboot, but it was a radio flyer. Okay. And I honestly used it for a very long time. Did you did you ride in it or did you pull stuff with it? Well, I rode it until I flipped it, and that was not a bad idea then, because you know I lived on a hill. Yeah. So that was a really bad idea to sit on it and to say, oh, I could steer it with a handle facing me. Yeah, it's not going to work. That I was could, not I a, told you that. That wasn't clever. No, no, no. So I had that, but then I would haul things around, and then I figured out how to tow it with my bicycle, okay. like a trailer. <laughs> hey, you're resourceful that yep. way. And then my radio flyer died when it, it gave up its life, basically, to become a bridge for my bicycle over some little stream. Oh, okay. Like, it was rusted out and everything, so then I just took the sheet metal and, like, folded it over so I could ride my bicycle over a stream. Yeah. Everything has you said, and reusing is recycling. There so you go. It's good for the environment. Yeah, unfortunately, it might still be at the stream. <laughs> still, <laughs> just putting like metal particulates <laughs> into the water. <laughs> All right. Well, hope Sorry. nobody nobody chases you down for yeah, that. One. Yeah. Uh, the next uh, popular gift of the 1920s: shake your hand with a joy buzzer. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I never had one of those. You never had one. No, did you? I think I might have gotten one, but I don't remember using it. It's, mm. kind, it's kind of one of those gifts where, like, once you use it once. Everybody's got it. Every, yeah, everybody's on to you. They're Actually, like, everybody else in the room it. knows it too. Right, and and I'm also I'm like I'm like an eight year old with a joy buzzer in my hand. I'm walking around with my family, and I go, "Hey, Uncle John, shake my hand." I've never asked to shake anybody's hand before. I'm an eight year old. Of course, exactly. they know that I'm up to something. And you're not going to do it to someone in school. You go on the school bus, shake my hand. They take the lunchbox and whack on the side of the head. <laughs> and those are the big metal lunchboxes. Exactly. That's a good podcast get, coming. Get like a talk about male of, lunchboxes. Uh, the, the, all right. So then the next uh, the next one from the twenties, yo yo. All right, I can see that. All right, I like yo yos. I still have some of those. Mm. And when we were growing up, remember, there was also that funky kind of yo-yo, the butterfly yo-yo. The butterfly and the Yomega. You know, oh, the that was Yomega? the one with the spring that yeah, couldn't go the, wrong. You can't, you can't, it was like cheating. It would always come back. Always. Yeah. Unless you tied a knot, it was coming back. That was good engineering, right? Because what's, what's, what's the worst thing about the yo-yo? Is that you can't. You can't do it <laughs> if you don't. If you're not, don't put practice hours. Yeah, into but you the can yo-yo. do the tricks. You can put the sleeper or rock the baby. You mm-hmm. can do any of those with the Yo Omega. But you could like you know end up like scaring your brother. It would be like <laughs> you'd wing it right past their head. You'd be like, Doo. yeah, yeah. So advancing the Yo 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 technology. Mm. All right, so that brings us to the 30s. What do we got? You go. I'll go on the 30s too. Sure. Okay, so. Just like out of uh, Christmas Story, the Red Rider BB gun. Oh yes, yeah. we talked about we this. did. I didn't even know that that was a real thing until that was, we talked about it. That was when we were talking about the radio shows. I think the cartoons. Yes, episode we were talking about that. Yeah, Red mm-hmm. Rider BB gun for real. You can buy one in the thirties, uh, and then if you couldn't get your hands on a BB gun, you could always buy a sock monkey. Oh yeah, the, the the like the monkeys that were made up with socks, which I think originally should have been made up with like your old socks, but instead people would buy them already made, right? Yeah, I I, I would I would prefer to have a pre-made sock monkey than a monkey <laughs> made out of my old socks <laughs> because I'm not gonna want to just like cuddle and sleep with that as a kid. Certainly not out of your dad's socks. Ugh, <laughs> nasty. Uh, and then army men. Army men was big. Uh, Big oh, in the yeah. 30s. Well, that makes that makes sense. My right? brother and I played with army men even growing up. We used to have a huge battle 
I mean, we would set up the whole rec room with a gigantic, you know, military campaign. And you got the green team and the, and the brown. No, There's we were like both, green. Green. both we were, green. Both green? We were both green. But then at some point I would cheat and I'd like bring out like model fighter jets and just like wipe them out. <laughs> That's cheating. <laughs> yeah, but what is your life? I have missiles. Out? Boom. <laughs> All right, 40s. Bring us through the 40s. All right, we got Legos. Legos go all the way back to the 40s. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, and and my brother-in-laws, mm-hmm. they are like, they were always Lego people. Yeah. They were big, big Lego fans. I, I, the Legos are fun, but once you're done building something, you're, you're basically done. Y- if you're going after, I mean, sometimes you can cannibalize the pieces, but. Yeah, but then the only thing I could build then is, is, is the <laughs> same generic little house <laughs> over and over. It's a square doesn't even have a roof it's just four walls if i'm lucky i put a door in there you go yep you have a little hole for a window yeah mm-hmm. oh so sad all right then you got the magic eight ball oh now yeah. i own a magic eight ball i actually own one right now the, the problem with magic eight balls of course is those stupid air bubbles yes you'd be fine and then an air bubble would pop up and then you you all you'd end up seeing is that white ball with some words you couldn't make it out and you can't tell no it's like the answer might be oh Exactly. And then you're like tipping it so you can kind of see it. <laughs> you're trying to get the ball out of the way, but then the ball moves, you know. But but they were kind of cool, you know, ask the question of the eight yeah. and then shake it. And, and then if it's not the right answer, you shake it again until you get the right answer <laughs> yeah. that you want. Ask again later. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right. And then the slinky. Slinky. Which I also have. I'm seeing a trend here. Yeah. <laughs> I'm, I'm a man all, of the 40s, I guess. I don't know. Keeping all these old toys around. The slinkies, yeah. it's it's. It's a spring. Well, mine was a slinky from the 80s. You know, that was like, you know, that was plastic and it was like hot pink on one side and like cobalt blue on the other. So it totally looked like the 80s. And yes. You know, and. Yeah, so it was like Miami Vice uh, going down the staircase. Exactly. Yes. Exactly. Go get them, Tubbs. <laughs> yeah, exactly. All right. So do you want me to do 50s too? Yeah, do 50s. All right. So the 50s. Does it, no big shocker here. Barbie. Barbie in the 50s. That makes a lot of sense. Yeah. And my wife was a big Barbie fan even when she was growing up. You're kidding me. No. I never would have guessed that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, Fisher Price Little People. Oh, these are the um, the the things that they don't even have like legs. They're just kind of nope. like like pegs with a, with a head. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. Exactly. They're different now, though. But I will say that I grew up, I had a couple of them growing up. My kids, when they were growing up, especially my daughter, yeah. she um, had like a bazillion of them, the, the new modern people. ones. Yeah. Ooh. Yeah. And, and in fact, it was like this, the whole living room when she was like two was devoted to little people. I mean, seriously, the whole <laughs> living room. We had the birthday cake. We had like the farm. We had the swings. We had the, you know, the castle. We had it, everything you could imagine. Nice. We had. Nice. Little Absolutely. people paradise. Mm-hmm. And then finally, Mr. Potato Head. Mr. Potato Head. But not the plastic one. Not the plastic one. No, no, no. The original Mr. Potato Head back in the 50s, they were just parts. They were just like, you know, eyes, ears. You'd have to stick them into a real potato. You just, <laughs> so some assembly required. Get your own potato yeah. and shove an ear into That's it. That's why it was called Mr. Potato Head. So that makes sense. <laughs> Not that there was this plastic fake potato uh, with actual locations you have to inject things in. Uh, see... Mr. Potato Head with a real potato sounds like a whole lot more fun than the just plain old Mr. Potato I can never understand what was the draw to playing with Mr. Potato Head. Because, yeah, I'd make my little face and then I'd be done. Yeah. And if you had the real one after you were done, you know, you had lunch. <laughs> Get some fries. Yeah, exactly. All right. 1960s. Bring it to me. All right. Most popular in 1960s, Etch-A-Sketch. Oh yeah, yeah. That's so, a sketch. Yeah, if if, uh, if you're really good, you could make a square. Yep. And then another square, and then a square around that. You know, heaven help you if you want to try to make something curved. Well, I'll tell you the best. Uh, the best Dilbert comic strip ever was the pointy hair boss when they gave him the etch a sketch and pretended that was his laptop, and he was like, <laughs> "You got to turn it upside down to reboot," and he was like shaking it over his head. <laughs> that was the best. The edge sketch, and then uh, uh, the easy bake oven. Oh yeah, with the uh, like the six hundred watt light bulb. Light bulb, and you had to get the special food to mix up the special batter so that it would actually cook under the heat of the six hundred watt light bulb or whatever it was. Maybe it was a hundred watt. It was a hundred watt. Yeah, I don't think it was a six hundred watt. (laughs) (laughs) How come the plastic is melting? The neighbor is like, are they executing someone in that house? (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> but it makes good cake. Yeah, exactly. Uh, and then G.I. Joe. G. 
G.I. Joe. Go Joe. Because knowing is half the battle. It is. <laughs> we actually talked about them in our cartoon episode. Yeah, we did. Um, but that was from the 80s. That was the cartoons. These are the actual figures. The and dolls. The, yeah. and, and the figures from the 70s and the 80s were only like three inches tall. Mm-hmm. These were the big, they were Barbie size. I mean, they were like tall Barbie size, not little Barbie. I mean, they were like six inches, eight okay. inches. Serious action Serious figures. Serious action figures, yeah. Yes. Yeah, definitely G.I. Joe. So then the 70s come, and of course, everyone's favorite, which has made a big comeback recently, uh, Rubik's Cube. Really? People are excited about the Rubik's Cube again? I think ever since they made that robot that can like solve it in like 1.1 seconds or something, now everybody's trying to solve it. And then my I went to um, at Thanksgiving, I was at my brother-in-law's house, yeah. and everybody was like downloading the Rubik's Cube solution app. So you take a picture of like the, the, the Rubik's Cube and it tells you how to solve it. Really? Yeah. That's cheating. Duh. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but then I, I could never solve them. I, I we had a friend who used to be able to do them like blindfolded. Remember that? We have yeah. a friend who could do it like hey, a couple minutes and it's solved. Yeah. It's crazy. I could solve it, but I have to take the Rubik's Cube apart and then snap it back together. Mine is the stickers. Right? Stickers. Peel them off. <laughs> Nobody will ever know. No. How come your red squares are all sideways? Exactly. Uh, what else? Uh, we got Nerf balls and Koosh balls. Oh, yeah, yeah. With uh, the, the, the crazy kind of like rubber uh, hair coming off of these things. Yeah, that was the, the Koosh balls. And then, of course, the Nerf balls. Nerf was like a big brand new thing back in the 70s. Yeah, it was soft. You could, yeah. Yeah. You could, you could play it inside and not get too much trouble until mm-hmm. you broke something. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Not that I would know from experience. <laughs> mm-hmm. And then we have, of course, we're talking the seventies, yeah, late seventies, yeah, Star Wars action figures. Yeah, so Star Wars was huge, and anything Star Wars would sell. Yeah, absolutely, except for tickets to go see the um, holiday special, <laughs> as we talked about. <laughs> not, not good. Uh, so, so then that brings us to the. Big 80s, baby. Yeah, this is when things started to get a little crazy. Maybe oh, because in the 80s, there's the me generation. Everybody wanted the best thing. Everybody wanted stuff, right? The yep. 80s was all about stuff. Yep. So, Especially the first one on the list that I'm looking at. Yep. The Cabbage Patch doll. People went to war over oh Cabbage Patch gosh. dolls at the store. It was terrible. Mm-hmm. Yeah, people got hurt. There were fights. There were riots. There would yep. be a shipment of dolls. These are small little dolls that had like a scrunched up kind of face that was kind of sewn into some like stocking kind of material, I want to yeah. say. Yeah. And everybody was going crazy about these Cabbage Patch dolls in the 80s to the point where you had to put together a serious action plan and execute it with military precision. precision. Yeah. To get one of those dolls, you'd be calling around the neighborhood, like, "Do you have them yet? Do you have them yet?" Have them yet? <laughs> and if somebody had it in their hands, you would like grab it. You'd be no. like, oh, I'm the cashier. I'll pay it for you. And you disappear. Gone. Yep. So yeah, that was uh, the Cabbage Patch dolls. You know, not much different than that was Teddy Ruxpin. Not much different with regard to trying to get one of those. Okay, hard to get, but yeah. very different because Teddy would talk. Well, yes, from was, a technological perspective, it was amazing. It was for the kids. first talking doll. Are you kidding me? It was like a babysitter. It was. That's true. It was, it was like, like parents would be like, "Here's Teddy Ruxpin. We're going he's to just, dinner. <laughs> he's going to talk to you now while I go watch my news." <laughs> yeah. No, I never, I never had one. Never, but I never really saw one. But I don't know. They, they were looking interesting. And a bit creepy, actually. Mm-hmm. But yeah. yeah, their eyes kind of like stared yeah. at you while they talked. Yeah. It was mm-hmm. creepy. Um, and then Transformers. More than meets the eye. Yeah, absolutely. And then Pogs. I remember Pogs. I, I never, do not remember Pogs. They, these are like those little like almost like bottle cap kind of things and you're supposed to collect them and then there are little games that you played with the pods. Nope. No, no, no recollection whatsoever. I had a few. I didn't get as crazy as a lot of the kids in the 80s, but it, like it was a, a national craze. People just going insane over pogs. Mm. So, uh, yep, don't remember that. No. But then that gets us to the 90s. The 90s. You know, and the in the 90s, of course, the number one item from the 90s do you remember this sound? <laughs> Do you recognize it? Of course, that's Elmo. Tickle me, Elmo. <laughs> yeah, exactly. That, that was another toy that brought people to blows at the toy store. Oh, yeah. All right. I mean, you had lines, you had angry mobs. And if anybody could pretend to do that voice, like you had a voice career for like a month. <laughs> 
Like everybody wanted your recording on a tape player or something. Just right? to be Elmo was huge. Yeah, you'd like make out greetings to like people's kids just because you knew how to do Elmo's voice. And this is in the nineties because Elmo was still around, right? Well, so. Elmo came to Sesame Street on the later edge of it, and then Tickle Me Elmo was like in the very beginning of the nineties. But but if I remember correctly, Tickle Me Elmo was like the number one Christmas toy for like three years in a row. Yeah. I mean, it lasted a long time. They had a bunch of different variants. There was there was like a Hug Me Elmo. There were all different kinds of like Elmo skating dolls. Yeah, they were still hard to get even the second year. It was hard to get a, a Tickle Me Elmo. I remember that clearly growing up. It was, yeah. that was a strange one. And then, of course, one of our favorites, Super Soakers. <laughs> so these are so much fun. Oh, my gosh. What, who came up with that? That's brilliant. It was like, you know what? Instead of having this tiny little water pistol that when you squeeze your, your finger squirt, really quick will we'll activate a small pump, instead, let's pressurize a tank with air <laughs> and force it to project water great distances like and with great force. Feet. That's right. <laughs> oh, oh, it was awesome. Man, they were awesome. Don't <laughs> use inside the house, but fun. <laughs> yes. Uh, yeah, and I never did. I think I would never have been allowed back in the house if I did. <laughs> um, and then that leads us to the 90s with the Furbies. The Furbies. So there's another kind of like electronic talking kind of a thing, right? But, but remember, they would mimic you. Yeah. And do you remember the big problem that occurred with the Furbies in the Department of Defense? No, oh, they were being... Uh, the people they, would bring them into the Pentagon, but then... Get the like, secrets. Yeah, so you know they would be talking about some sort of like confidential or you know secret information, and then the Furby would like, repeat the secret. And they were just like, <laughs> oh my God. The Furby knows our national secrets. Oh, you gotta love it. Luckily, it wasn't like connected to the internet. Yeah. <laughs> Not like everybody's phones now. Yeah, so or that little black cylinder sitting right behind me. Yep. <laughs> Everything <laughs> is going up to the cloud. Yep, exactly. All right, so it gets us into the 2000s. So yeah. So this is much more recent, so everybody probably remembers all this. Absolutely. Uh, the Wii, the Nintendo Wii. Okay, so that was probably the only time it, in fact, it is the only time I ever went shopping early on Black Friday in the morning. Was really? the getaway? Did you? And you were successful. I was successful. Nice job. Yeah, I, I I called ahead. I knew they were going to get a certain shipment. They were like, they're not allowed to talk about what we're going to get, but I suspect we're going to have see a number of them, maybe around fifty. All right. So, <laughs> so you, you went after it like it was a cabbage patch doll. You got your. It wasn't so bad because I was there so early in the morning, it wasn't like a big line. Okay. I was able to get it and get out of there, and then I was like, I'm done with this idea. This is stupid, waking up early in the morning and going around. I don't like this. I want to sleep. Uh, so did you do the same thing? Did you wake up early for a brat stall? No. No? No, no but my, my daughter did get one for um, during when she, you know, when she was little. Somebody gave it to her as a present. She got a couple brat dolls. Yeah, they, they were like stylish, right? These are these are like Barbies with attitude. <laughs> yeah, they had definitive. Yeah. 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 yeah, exactly. That was their claim to fame, in fact. Yeah. And then the Razor Scooter. Of course, the Razor Scooters, which are still big, actually. Oh, yeah, I see him, right? Yeah, razors and razor, all sorts of razor things. My son's got all sorts of razor stuff. Razor scooters. He had that razor go-kart. You know, he's got those razor things that you put on your feet, on your, you know, they have the rollers on your shoes that give off sparks when you try to slide backwards. Really? Yep. That doesn't seem safe, Scott. Maybe not, but it's cool. <laughs> you just have to move fast enough so the sparks are behind you. Yeah. <laughs> so it'll get your clothes on fire. Yeah. <laughs> details, details. So, uh, so then now that that brings us up to past the 2000s, what do you think, uh, like today, what do you think is the big thing this holiday? V-Bucks. V-Bucks? Yeah, you know what V-Bucks are? I don't know what V-Bucks are. Fortnite. Oh, okay. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so you that. could buy stuff at Fortnite. So you could do the dances or you can do, you know, you can, you can get the, the step ups for your, you know, the armaments and things. Yeah. You, know? you can get the, you can get different skins. Yeah, those guys are getting rich at the speed of light. Lots of money in Fortnite. No, yes. no. So that is electronic money. I'm thinking a toy for under the tree, and my kids are all grown, so I don't I don't have my finger on the pulse of what's big this Christmas. But according to the internet, there's this thing called a fingerling. Isn't that a potato? It is not a potato. It is it is a back to Mr. Potato Head. It is a little electronic finger puppet. So it's a finger puppet that you can interact with, right? Because it's all connected to the internet. Of course you can. It's your finger. And and no, you're not. <laughs> Mrs. Torrance. 
for everybody who who I wish you could see him right now <laughs> talking to his finger. <laughs> so so you have this little electronic finger puppet, and it can sing, right? and it can move around, it can swing off of your finger, it goes to sleep, it does all this pretty crazy stuff. So <laughs> it's pretty exciting, I guess. I if guess you want a electronic finger puppet, so. Uh, all right. Well, I'm 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 totally out of it. I don't I don't know what else is really popular right now except yeah. for Fortnite, Fortnite, Fortnite. Well, we've got to get you more excited about Christmas. All right. Okay. How about this? Maybe if we had more people trying to convince me to be in really into Christmas, that's what we probably need. Yeah. I need a little more idea. help than just you. That's a good idea. So I have an idea. How about we ask some of our family members to come into this call into this podcast? And tell us what their most, we'll say, memorable presents are. I mean, I don't want to put them on the spot and say what's their favorite. And I also don't want to say what's like their least favorite. Yeah, is, that right? could be mean. That, yeah, so let's do with the most memorable. And we'll bring our family members in. All right, sounds great. Cool. Let's do it. Okay, does everyone have their eggnog or other drink of cheer? Yep, I got mine right here. Everybody good? Mm-hmm. All right, yes. perfect. Yeah. All right, so Scott, I thought it would be fun to have our family members here talk about their most memorable presents, right? Not their favorite, not their least favorite, mm-hmm. just what stands out in their memory the most. Very cool, exactly. So, all right, anybody here want to go first, or do you want me to break the ice? I think you better break the ice. Yeah. Okay, so all right. Well, I will break the ice. My most memorable present is a snow shovel. What? Come yes. on. That's I got That's crazy. But but it was an ergonomically correct snow shovel with a curve to protect my back. <laughs> I should have oh. let off. So of that. that was my present was a snow shovel so that I can shovel the driveway with better health and safety. Who who gave you the shovel? I think it was Santa. Santa, Santa gave you this. <laughs> yeah, yes, that is so sad. So I'm it's sorry. very, it's very memorable. Yeah, it is memorable. Yes, uh, is it your favorite? I it, we said we're not talking about favorites. Yes. We're talking about memorable. <laughs> Most memorable. Yes, my second memorable. I'll just throw that out there. Was I got a door for my bedroom? Oh, okay. Yeah, privacy is important. That was good. Mm-hmm. That was good. Yep, that was sitting right there next to the tree, big wrapped thing unwrapped, and I was like, "Wow, it's a tour." <laughs> I was thrilled, actually. Yeah. yeah very memorable. Oh my gosh. All right. So who, who would like to be next on the most <laughs> memorable present? I think I will. All right. I am Bug Queen. <laughs> All right. Excellent. Well, I think my most memorable, also one of the most favorite, would be my Barbie dream house. Oh, really? Whoa. Yeah. So this would be back, back in the 70s, like late 70s. And it was just amazing. It was like orange and yellow, <laughs> and I used it. I had Barbies, but I also used it for my strawberry shortcake dolls. Why that not? Is, right? That's not canon. I mean, you got you got mixed up in different <laughs> kinds of universes inside of a Barbie dream house. It's like Batman showing up with uh, <laughs> sometimes. Crossover it, sometimes you have to think outside the box. That is right? amazing. I guess so, yeah. Right. So, so I'm, that that was a lot of fun. That was an amazing present. I I have younger brothers, two younger brothers, and I went away to college, and uh, they're a lot younger than me, and they they got to play with it too. But you know what they used it for? <laughs> I come home. G.I. Joe? From... No. <laughs> he man. No, no. I came back from college one time. They turned it to a matchbox car garage. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, you got to use that magic, uh, or the the elevator has to be used for something. Might as well yeah. be a car elevator. Um, but they were all like Mercedes. Mercedes Benz. Oh yes, yeah. Because it's the dream house. It was I mean, a dream house. Yeah. <laughs> right, right, right. So that would be my most memorable gift. Okay. That All is, right. That is so funny because I have I have known you for decades, right? And I yeah I did not have you. <laughs> didn't see that as one coming. Huh? Barbie grow up. Yeah, uh, I liked my or Barbies. growing up with Barbies. Wow, I'm learning a lot today. Right, who's who's, <laughs> who's next? next? I think I'll go. All right. I'm Stevie Jump. <laughs> That's right. This is this is Stevie Jump who did our theme song. The incredible mm-hmm. Stevie Jump. Yes. Uh, my memorable gift was the Segway I got from my parents. Ooh, the Segway. Wait a minute. What? <laughs> what? Are you, you have a Segway? Yeah, I got it for Christmas last year. 
Honestly? Yeah? Why are you not writing it right now? Because I'm doing the podcast. <laughs> <laughs> Believe me, if he could, he would be like he wouldn't walk to the bus. He wouldn't. He would just see him like with, wow. with his two little wheels everywhere. Yep, no more feet. <laughs> That's amazing. So, so honestly, is it easy to ride on? Well, now it is. Well, I'll tell you, the funniest event I ever saw, I think, was when you you accidentally you you didn't think about it. You stopped and then you powered it off without getting off first. <laughs> and so the gyroscopes were like. Okay. I'm done. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't hurt myself. I was no, like, you jumped right off. It was that's why you're Stevie Jump. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's yeah. where it came from. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> Stevie Jump off the segue. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> it's a full name. All right, who, who's that's next? Awesome. Oh, can I go? Uh, sure. All right, all right. Uh, so mine is um, a little geeky. I don't know if anybody is going to remember this. But uh, text adventures used to be the big thing way back in the day, like yeah. in the 80s. You remember Zork, right? You remember? No, no but uh, <laughs> Okay, adventure? No? Anybody? No. Okay, well. What is this? So it is a video game that is not a video game. You play it on your computer, <laughs> and instead of pictures, there's a paragraph of text or prose. And Exciting. You it. Yes. It's like choose your own adventure book yes. with a computer. Exactly. That is exactly okay. what it's like. So it says you are in front of a house. What do you want to do? And you would type go north. And then you would go north. And hopefully that would be into the house. And then or open door. And then inside it would say you you see a um a bottle on a table. What do you want to do? And I'd be like drink bottle, right? Things it. like that. Yeah, it's great. I told my grandmother about this. And she went out and found a collection of all 26, I think it had to be like 26, different Scott Adams text adventures. It had a Spider-Man text adventure, it had a pirate text adventure, it had the dinosaur text adventure, it had a sci-fi. It was a giant collection of all these computer games. And what was amazing was that my grandmother had just kind of like heard me talk about this. She went out of her way. She didn't even really understand what it was, but she just knew even. it was something <laughs> that I would enjoy. Well, later on, on your iPad, I will download one of these text adventures and you will, you will understand the joy that I had as a young 80s child growing up. No, I'm good. All right. I, I'm sure I will. Remember, remember when I'm you guys sure. walked around the house saying, oh, that's so 8-bit? Yeah, this is like <laughs> oh so two bit. Two bit. <laughs> this, is, this is way back, yeah. way back. Yeah, exactly. Oh, I can't. I'm trying to share with the group, and you guys just keep boosh, 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 getting in <laughs> on me. Oh goodness. Sorry. Right, who's next? Who's next on the chopping block? It sounds like. <laughs> oh, okay. Okay. All right. So I'm Steve's daughter. Oh, oh. hi, Annabeth. Hi. <laughs> Um, so my most memorable gift would be when I was around five or six, my Nana got me and both of my siblings these huge plush dog stuffed animals, and they were like four or five feet in length. They, I, they were huge, remember? I remember. This is giant. Yeah, they were giant. And when you're a little kid, like it was bigger than me. <laughs> and, and bigger I, is always yes. better. And I did not have a dog yet because my parents were mean. Um, so this was my replacement. <laughs> but I'm, I'm taking notes on that one. <laughs> what do you mean, were mean? <laughs> true, true. Me and my brother used to hold the floppy ears and ride down the stairs like they were horses or something. <laughs> or sleds. <laughs> or sleds, yeah, or sleds. <laughs> but it was a great <laughs> gift that I got many years of stair riding out of. That's not what they mean by dog sledding. Just no, so it's know. not, but you got to get creative. <laughs> I did not know that. That was your yeah, that was your most my memorable, most memorable and favorite. Gift. Did, did yours have a name? I don't remember, but it was a big Saint Bernard. I remember that. I do. I do remember. This thing was huge, and every time we're trying to clean up your room, it was yeah. It was a, I an never got to rid try of to get it around ever. it. Yep. <laughs> All right, who who is next? Hi, I'm Rebecca. I am Steve's favorite daughter. Second <laughs> not daughter. True, not true. We um, do not have favorites in our house. Mm -hmm. Anyway, so my most memorable gift um, is from when I was in high school, and I was in some AP classes, and I unwrapped not one present, but four different AP review material <laughs> books that counted as four separate gifts, and one was a flashcard set, 
Um, and this was like in the early days of Instagram and I laid them all out and put them on Instagram and everyone thought it was a joke that I was just being funny, but they were really my, uh, my Christmas presents. So I wrote a couple months later, I wrote like a narrative about it in English class. And once again, everyone was shocked and amazed, but it became really memorable and a good gag. And I bring it up every once in a while when I want to guilt some people, um, <laughs> But yeah, and then I don't think I opened any of them. Oh, come on. <laughs> you you must have used one of them just to get through the test. I think they were they were gifted to Annabeth, who then did you use any of them? Yeah, I used them for my piece. Okay. Yeah, and sure. I'm sure Andrew's going to use them this year. Yeah. Um that that is a wonderful story about an amazing and practical <laughs> gift that would help your uh, your life trajectory. Uh, immensely. Right. It was really thoughtful of Santa to give to me. I don't know what my parents are doing. They gave me like fun gifts, but <laughs> Santa cares about you. <laughs> Welcome to the door. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. It could have been a snow shovel. All right. So I think we only have one more left here. Oh, yep. only one. Oh, and who are you, young lady? I'm Katie. I'm Scott's daughter. Oh, hi, Katie. Hello. So my most memorable gift would have to be my first hamster. His name was Jack, and he was an escape artist. <laughs> <laughs> yes, first, he gosh. was. Oh, yeah. He was going everywhere. He would go on his little ball all the time. But I just remember just underneath the Christmas tree, just seeing a hamster cage and just this adorable little rodent just staring up at you. <laughs> it was fantastic. Yeah, it was. Yeah. It's also mine. That too. is cool. So you said your first hamster. So he was an escape artist, meaning that he, he, he was, got away? We've caught him each time. Uh, he did make a couple interesting things. Yeah, he we should have named him Houdini. Yeah. <laughs> One time we found him because the Wi-Fi died. What? Yep. yep the key, so it was like, why is the Wi-Fi dead? And I go walking upstairs up to the loft, where the landing area where we had Jack living. Yeah. And uh, it was like, that's where the Wi-Fi was, too. And it's like, why is the Wi-Fi? Wow, what happened to these wires? Why are they cut? <gasps> oh, no. <laughs> oh. But he was okay. Yeah. He, he was, was just fine. wandering around. He didn't get electrocuted by the Wi-Fi? No. No. All right. No. So why was he Jack? Um, I think I just liked it. <laughs> yeah. And I think Steven just went around whatever I said. Yeah. I don't really remember <laughs> the reason. Do you guys remember the reason? Nope. I, I don't recall it at all. Yep. But I can oh, tell I you that I my know. second hamster was a very original name. It was Jack Jr. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> That is awesome. Guess what? If we ever have a third, guess what it's called? <laughs> <laughs> Felonious. <laughs> so, so Jack Jr. and Jack. And Jack, both yes. of them. All right. So is anything else anyone wants to bring up about the holiday season and their most memorable presents? I could talk mm. more about text adventures. No, I think you. that's oh, enough. I think that might be enough then. We're good. Well, you know what? I have an idea. How about on the count of three, we just all say into the mic, Merry Christmas and Happy New Year. How's that? Sounds like a good idea. All right. So everybody, ready? One, two, three. Merry, Merry Christmas, Christmas and Happy New Year. Wow, that sounded almost like the Peanuts. That was amazing. That was yeah. great. Yeah, it was. So all right. Well, so that's our family. So we want to thank you all for listening to I Used to Know. I hope you're enjoying our podcast and find it fun and informative. I know I have a lot of fun doing it. I have a lot of fun doing it, too. I mean, this has just been an amazing ride, and we love having the chance to share all of this with you all. Absolutely. So from our families to yours, we wish you a great holiday season. And a very, very happy new year. Here we come. 2019. Yeah. Thank you all for your support. Threes and eights, everybody, and happy holidays. Talk to you soon. Bye. <laughs>